Cooper's about to fucking knock this the fuck out. Kakesh! Come on, you fucking pussy! <laughs> What's the score? Out of the it's two nothing. Top of the six. They got time. I mean, they didn't fucking win till the end of the last game. You know, uh, uh, P, 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 P Puffy. Is Puff Daddy. A, yeah, he's a huge Mets fan. Yeah, that's why they need to lose. Right, because pedophilia cannot win. No, not this time. time. It's been winning most of no, life. No matter how much New York, and they're the ones housing him right now. How fucked up is that? They're housing Diddy. Yeah, he's in New York. He's in the Brooklyn. Jail, right? Yeah. Brooklyn Zoo. Well, I mean, that's... He's in jail. I mean, that's a good place to house him. I guess. Yeah. That's where you want to house him. <laughs> that's where you would want to house him. I believe criminals. he's in jail. Pat, yeah. what? Yeah. New Welcome York. to Drag the Lake. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm Welcome Pat. to a brand new episode of Drag Pat. the Lake. I am your host, Andy Malfrino. With me, as always, the other host... I'm Pat. Pat. Joe. Hi, everybody. We've been having a fun-filled week. Uh, we just got back from Skankfest. Thank you so much for everyone checking out uh, Skankfest episode, the Team George press conference. Yeah, yeah. You boys are showing up, and you're showing out. And God damn it, do our fat asses fucking appreciate it. Um, Pat, how you doing, buddy? Brother, I'm doing wonderfully. Cool. <laughs> Thank you for watching Drag the Lake. Guys. We'll be back next week. We'll check in on you. Um, I've been having a I've been having a good week. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Is there a is there a lot of news? I got to be honest. I haven't been paying attention to news. You know what I've been doing is because I wanna um I wanna go a little bit more hardcore with Drag the Lake and doing music reviews and stuff. So I've been listening to a lot more pods, like listening to musicians talk about stuff, and it's just reminding me how much more. I have to listen to so I've been doing like I've been doing deep dives uh, on bands and shit like that I was listening to a bunch of hate breeds old discography yeah I was listening to rancid's old discography and I got into today and I think this might be uh, a new segment that I want to introduce and it's called late to the party and you know who I'm fucking late to the party on who's this now motorhead really Bro, I was listening to Motorhead today because I was listening to a bunch Motorhead, of pop. Motorhead. Well, I was listening to. <laughs> what's the price? For- Is that one? Motorhead. <laughs> Is that what that's about? I about? just played the Ace of Spades. <laughs> yeah. Is that what that's about? Yeah, that's okay. them. Okay. But yeah, no, uh, I find. Because Motorhead, Motorhead was a band. Because there's a lot of these bands. You get it more with old school bands from the 70s, like the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Yeah. I say this all the time about Earth, Wind, and Fire. You, 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 everyone hears September all the time in like at ball games or at a fucking bowling alley or whatever, the, at a wedding. Yeah. They hear September all the time, and it makes people forget. They're like, no, no, no. Earth, and, Earth Wind, and Fire is not just good. Yeah. They fucking rip. It, they, dude, Fantasy is a great song by them. Yeah. Uh, Reasons is probably a great... And that's something I feel like most people haven't heard at all. But like, yeah. They're, they're whole, they just create an atmosphere. It's crazy. September is like their... Um, uh, what's, what's the song? Uh, all the Small Do Things. Do you remember... You know, oh, yeah, oh! That's, <laughs> that's the thing. Like, September's it's their all the small thing. That's it, very funny. It is a good song, and then it's like when you hear it, you sing along, and you like it. Yeah, you know it. yeah. But it's like if you're like if somebody's gonna be like, "What's your favorite Blink One Eighty Two song?" Like if you say all the small things, you're a dickhead. You're a fucking piece of shit. You're a fucking dumb yeah, asshole. So like, did you see by the way recently? Just Tom DeLonge to, fucked that up. No, no, no. Actually, I was gonna say the it was him at a because it's playoff baseball right now. Yeah. Go Phillies. Yeah. Uh, right if you watch No More Heroes, we're still watching the baseball we're game. Still watching the baseball game. I gotta be honest, with a, a man riddled with ADHD, yeah, it's actually helping. Yeah, there's something about having flow to it. There's like a beginning, middle, like they're going, they're but no progress. J- just like it's actually, it's actually helping my mind not wander. Oh, as you're talking and as I'm like looking at the screen, I can like weirdly listen to you. Yeah, and like also, it's actually not hurting the pod. Good. In nice, my yeah. opinion. I mean, yeah, comment no. down below if this fucking sucks ass. Yeah. <laughs> also, if you're a Mets fan, don't comment. Just yeah. you know, just pray to your God, Diddy. Yeah, just go fucking... Just have fun with your pedo-loving fan base. But, like, there, there's a... The, no, he's at this uh, San Diego Padres game. Yeah. And 
And I think he's there with his I kids. I saw that one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, And he's, like, sitting there and, like... just a boy he found. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was like... He's, like, surrounded by two kids. I'm like, I really hope those are his kids. So these are my kids. They're my boys. He's, like, he's just like sitting there and, like, they're playing all the small things. And they have... The, you're at the game, dickhead. You're sitting front row. Yeah. Like, I think behind home plate, or at least, like, very... You're in the front row. Yeah, he was, like, third base line, kind of behind home plate. The whole fucking stadium is... So Singing this song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, he's just sitting there like this. Yeah. You know, and, and you'd go, Pat, what do you want him to do? I don't know. Smile? React? Go, like, oh, you guys. Oh, my God. You guys. This Because, honestly, it's. I think it's different. So, t- tell me uh, Tell me if, the, if you agree with this or not. Same baseball stadium. Right. Let's just say he's playing. They're playing San Diego baseball. What baseball arena? I don't know what's called. Padres. <laughs> it's probably stadium? called like SunTrust Bank fucking center or something. <laughs> or whatever. It is. Oh yeah, it's fucking Sobe Energy Water yeah, Stadium. Yeah, whatever the fucking <laughs> historic. Nah, Sobe ain't got money like that anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not a good reference. Like that fucking lizard on the outside. Well, that was like ruining. the fucking. Uh, um, uh, when they tried to change the Hornets to the Pelicans for some reason for like two seasons. I didn't hate that. And they're at. <laughs> I'm, it, it, it would, it would, I, I like would give Pelicans. a fuck less if it was a different team. Cool it's like, bird. I'm sorry, guys. You have one of the most iconic logos. You have the hands. You guys produce the hands down greatest starter jacket in human history. Yeah. And you're just going to turn it to a fucking pelican. But if I may. But, but if, that was called what? If it's not an eagle or like if it's not a killer or a bird of prey, you got to go for cool bird. So if it's not a flamingo, it's going to be a pelican. <laughs> You're telling uh, me honorable pelican? Mention, honorable mention to the harpy eagle. You're telling me pelicans are a cool bird? Yes. Have you not seen a pelican? Not today. Well, brother, I grew up. I used to fuck with pelicans at the pier. <laughs> I, used to, <laughs> I used to squirt them in the face with a hose. You're like, they're the coolest bird to throw rocks at, Andy. <laughs> Dude, they think it's a fish, and they'll eat it, and they go, put and they spit it back out. Uh, Remember the Little Mermaid? Yeah, that's not cool. Pelicans have that's like a cool bird. Nah, pel- oh, there he is right there. Yeah, <laughs> pelicans have like uncle who lives in the basement energy. That's not cool. That's not cool at all. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. That is the coolest. That is. You're wrong. You're right. Okay, but let's just say same same baseball uh, stadium. Yeah, and Blink One Eight Two is playing there. Yeah, even them playing the song. He, you're playing the song, and they're singing the song along. That's expected. When you're at a sport, there's something different. When you're Song because they've done it. They did it with um, the fucking Avalanche the year they beat the Lightning for the Stanley Cup. I know much. I fucking hated that I year. Know how much you hated that? That was a really mad year that for me. Could have been their third Stanley Cup in a row, but they fucking took it from us and they used Blink One Eighty Two against us, brother. You don't gotta tell me. I know. You. Remember. I know. He remembers every bit of it. <sighs> Sorry, old oh, man. That's his haterade. I love the lightning. I love the lightning. <laughs> but there's a there's uh there's something different about your song becoming uh Seven Nation Army became so much powerful of a song when it became uh when it got adopted by it beca- D- DJs and and sports arenas. Dude, not even just sports arenas, but like spe- well, uh, but, uh, but like specifically that, you're like damn, dude. How can you not But like get specifically fucking uh soccer. Like every soccer stadium, every game does that and you have the whole like and they're twice yeah. they're like twice as big as football stadiums they just have the whole stadium singing that shit like that or something like mm-hmm. that so like he's just sitting there not reacting and it's like bro this is like even well, if you're a cel- like a huge star or something like let me huge. be devil's advocate and let- this is a team you're a fan of you're like these fans love your song so much that let me be devil's advocate patrick <sighs> when was when was all the small things written like 2001 i think 99 99 or 98. Damn. The 90s own that? Hold on, let's look it up. No, that was Enema of the State, so I want to say yeah. it was... I'm pretty sure 99, dude. Really? All, so, Enema of the State? I'll just look that up. Yeah, because... Uh, 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 dude Ranch was probably <laughs> like 95, right? Yeah, June 1st, 1999. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, Dookie was like 93. When was Dude Ranch? Can you look up Dude Ranch? Dude Ranch. D-U-D-E. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I put Dud Ranch. No. Uh, Bro, guy, guy Farm. Guy, guy stuff? 
Dude Ranch was 97. 97. Cheshire Cat was 95. Anima of the State was 99. Take Off Your Pants and Jack I Hate. Okay, so. Was 2001. Blink 182, the band, was 2003. And when did he leave Blink 182? I don't know. I don't need the whole discography. (laughs) Oh, you just want the history? Actually, wait, Uh, I do need the whole. No, 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 I do need the whole discography. Okay, so Tom DeLonge was 92 to 2005. And wow, damn, 2009 to 2015. And then to, he left a couple times? Well, no, they had a break for a while. But why would he not be? He was. No, no, o- he was the lead singer. 05 to 09 was their break. 05 to 09. Was Is that break. what you said? Because yeah, they all have that, yes. Yeah, 05 to 09 was their hiatus. Then Travis Barker almost he plays died. Keyboards and piano? What? Travis Barker plays keyboards and piano, too? He might. I mean, if Wikipedia says it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but okay, so uh, yeah, so oh five to oh nine was the break, and so then two thousand fifteen is when he left. And then yeah, so you gotta you gotta do the math. No, He's no. been playing all the small things right. for been... like two decades. Okay, but think about and the and short list. Patrick, please, please no, shut up. No, don't do that. <laughs> this is me interrupting. No, you. don't do. No, I was doing it. Oh, this is you interrupting me for the first time. This was, uh, <laughs> this was on purpose. <laughs> wow, this is wait, wait. Put you on, on Neil Diamond level, like this is like you're you're, this is oh there's a small handful of songs that the entire arena sings when they but, play it. But you're also leaving out the fact that all the small things sucks the most <laughs> ass ever. That's the point I was trying to get at before you interrupted me. Okay. Imagine if you, I may interrupt you again. Imagine <laughs> if it pleases the court. You get really good points when I interrupt you. So. Ima- no, you don't. You cut off really good points. Right. <laughs> um, imagine, imagine a world where you wrote one of the worst songs in humanity, and then for about two decades you had to play that song over and over again. Right. And on top of that, they're probably he's that's probably not the first time he's heard it at the Padres game. So he's uh, probably hearing. Yeah, it's play. A, it, I bet because all yeah. the small things is actually like. Like everyone knows, I think that's a play it at a sports game song. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like now that it's become one of those where the entire arena is singing it. Yeah, like that becomes like so. Yes, he's had to play it so long. Yeah, but how cool would it be if you're just sitting there and people just start sucking your dick and you don't have to do anything, <laughs> and people are like singing that song for you. You mm. don't have to do anything. That should be you going. There we go. That's what I like. All the adulation and none of the work. <laughs> you did. If I had to do, let's say, how long do you think it took? Probably that song itself. What a day to write, like day full day, write and record. You probably wrote it on their lunch break. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah. super simple song yeah. to write. And then for that song to become an anthem <laughs> song. Yeah. That's like. We will rock you, fucking Seven Nation Army. What else? Like yeah. uh, Sweet Caroline. Yeah. There's like a handful of songs. That's what I'm saying. That particular fucking uh, like, if you play Shania Twain, people are gonna sing the song. People <laughs> like it. Being like Is everybody gonna do it? No. We're gonna want to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna want to say. Yeah. Damn, feel, I feel like, like a, a woman, woman is definitely a song I want to belt. But, from the rooftops, but that, you can't, dude. You can't do it around the boys. But that's what I'm saying. Is like so. Yeah, at sporting events, all the small things is the per- somehow you you stumbled on the easiest song you've ever written, but it's the most iconic song you've written. I that's genuinely why, that's why you should react a little bit when the entire fucking stadium is fucking shit. Like, well, to be fair, actually doing a good job singing it too. Actually, to be fair. You know, maybe they caught, maybe they, maybe he started filming right after Tom DeLong like got up and was like, I love yeah. you. I love everybody. Thank you so right. much. And then he sat down and that's one. I don't know. I'm just, being I don't know. <laughs> You're right though. No, and that's the thing is, it like, is funny though, actually. Can you imagine being at, like, like say you and me go to the Phillies game and they just play on full volume 30 seconds of Drag the Lake <laughs> and we didn't even budge? And we're just like, <laughs> Yeah. Just like, yeah. Like eating a hot dog. Yeah, it did pretty good that day. Yeah. 
No, I, I I get what you're saying. Sorry. It is it is really funny to just no sell the whole like they're blasting your yeah. You know what? I was like for comedic sake, I was being a contrarian, but now that I'm genuinely thinking about it, you're sitting behind home plate. They are blasting one right. of your most famous songs. An entire arena, tens of tens of thousands of people are belting the words of your song, yeah. and you're just like. It's a- when the, when is, how much was parking he's earlier? Just like, he's like blankly staring <laughs> forward, like not even talking to his kids. Like, you know, your dad fucking wrote this banger, and that's what everybody's singing. Right? Yeah. Like, I know you guys don't think dad's cool, but all of these people are singing dad's <laughs> fucking song right now. You like that fucking jersey you're wearing? <laughs> these motherfuckers bought that jersey. That's going to be so <laughs> crazy as like being that level of successful. And it's your no matter how successful you are, your kids are still going to be like my dumb fucking dad. Yeah, that's so fucking sad. Although, actually, I did see this. I did see this video of uh, Wiz Khalifa and his kid, and it was like the coolest one because his kid was just like, "My dad's so fucking sick." Yeah, I love him so much. He's the man. And yeah. I was like, "That's pretty sick." That's pretty cool. Yeah, um, but like these. Because it's probably hard. It's probably hard when you're that rich and famous to to for your kid to not come out a at least a little bit of an entitled dickhead. Yeah, I could see that. It's gotta be so hard. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, that is that is so. I did, after genuinely thinking about it, I'm like that is a little bit crazy. They're blaring your song throughout the stadium. Yeah, and and <laughs> everybody sing. And that's the thing. It's like at some point they turn the music off, and the crowd is just singing the entire. Still song. singing, yeah. And you can still completely, perfectly. Everybody knows the words. Everybody knows the. Na, 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 na. Yeah. Like it's this thing where like, if people are using it to that extent, like you've done more. It's not just a one hit wonder thing. Like it's yeah. a, it's an icon. Like this song ha- hit somebody at some level to some extent everywhere like maybe every he, person maybe he contacted aliens that morning and he, <laughs> he was just in his head about it yeah, yeah. honestly yeah that's honestly he was just sitting there he's like going, i really hope they fucking stop that meteor how many how, many, <laughs> how much proof yeah exactly he knows about a fucking like texas sized me- meteor coming uh, towards the planet right now that's but. so funny i'm glad you brought that up i didn't think about that previously because i did sign a sh- uh shoe that off like it was nothing uh but no we got a little bit sidetracked i did um yeah i do want people to go listen to motorhead if they were oh. if, if you <laughs> yeah, were sorry. it's fine With they're, the, hey they're not singing those in a fucking baseball game <laughs> but no motorhead was really um i was listening to a bunch of them uh last night and on the way down here today and it was just hitting me because i was just like oh i really i really took them for granted and i think it's i think it's important to admit that publicly when you are the host of a music show and you claim to have all the best opinions on music yeah it's like i really really took because you know what it was i was listening to a bunch of pods with like punks and hardcore dudes and shit like that and i noticed they kept throwing out motorhead shout out hardlore pod i'm a big fan of it right now um they've been throwing out motorhead i was listening to Lars frederickson from rancid he was throwing out mo- he had a motorhead shirt on and i was like let me check this out and because i didn't realize apparently motorhead had like a motorhead was very integral in the coming together of the punk and metal communities. Yeah, yeah. Where, because I think for a while the punk and metal communities were very split. They would be very against each other. And then Motorhead was a good. It was a good way to show, like, yeah, there's actually a lot more crossover in these two genres. Like I was listening to them, like, brother, like Ace of Spades is kind of a punk song. Yeah. And I was listening to it, like I was, and dude. The wildest one to me, I was listening to their self-titled from like 77, and there's songs that like make me think of the dead Kennedys. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this is so fun. And then there were other songs that made me think of like more straightforward rock rock and roll bands and shit yeah, like yeah. that. And it really, it hit me today. I felt like a fucking dummy. I was like, wow, I really have been go- going this long in my life and not experiencing Motorhead like this. I'm a, I'm a real dummy. So that that's my late to the party. I want to throw out there and nice. let everyone know. You got to go listen to fucking Motorhead, dude. <laughs> I like that you're willing to admit when, like, because that's the same thing happened to me for, like, certain bands or. Well, I think for our credibility, like, we should be very transparent about our music taste. Yeah. And, and honestly, I, I will say that not, like, only are we, do we have a eclectic taste 
uh, to an extent, but also uh, I, we're not willing to we're, we're we're willing to admit when we're wrong. Yeah, at least when we've been wrong. And I think that's important because, like, I was so I was thinking about this a bunch too because I was doing uh, I dude, every couple weeks I find myself doing a deep dive on our buddy Fantano, and I go back and forth from hating him to loving him. <laughs> and I was like watching, I was watching this video. It was like why, uh, it was like why hip hop hates Fantano, and you know the real takeaway from watching that video is I go. Rappers are really sensitive. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and yeah. I was thinking about that in general. And it's just like, there's this, it's why I want to try to have more credibility. Like, I want us to have more credibility and be uh, sound of mind in our critiques and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Because it is like, 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 I was thinking about, um, I was listening to this one dude on this pod and he made this interesting point where he was talking to, he said, like, you can't call art bad. And, like, the way he said it, it got me really thinking. Because it's like, I know what he means, but at the same time, I go, you can, though. Yeah, Yoko. Yoko <laughs> fucking Ono. Because I uh, I realized I was... Uh, Anything that Yoko Ono does. <laughs> yeah, and then you'll do what that fucking goofy bitch does. But, no, I was realizing, because I was watching this one... I was watching this one band. Uh, I was looking at new music. Oh, yeah. Half, Half Waif. H-A-L-F-W-A-I-F. And I was they this band I just randomly stumbled upon. They put out new music and in they did a bunch of uh, which I hate these terms now, but they did a bunch of things when it's not like a full music video, it's a visualizer. Yeah, a vignette. Yeah, I, I all the little fucking terms and yeah. shit. It's, I hate those now, but yeah, they had these visualizers for her album, and in every one, uh, it had these people doing interpretive dance, yeah. and it made me realize. <laughs> This is why I wanted to bring this up. <laughs> I know you real well, yeah. dude. It made me realize I do weirdly have this level of respect for interpretive dance where I don't necessarily like it, but when you find someone who's like a real deep in their hippy dippy hand job who's like trying their hardest to express who they are through these goofy movements. I find stuff like that intriguing where I go, I don't even know if I like this, but the fact that I know you're expressing to me yourself in what you perceive as like the most honest way. Yeah. I go, okay, that's when I think it's like, you can't necessarily, if someone, if an artist is being a hundred percent like honest in the moment, I can see the argument where you're like, this isn't necessarily bad, but I also just don't fuck with it. Yeah, I, I, I like. To me, there are certain there are certain arts that are like, not, maybe not all of it in general, because like the the terms can be vague. Sometimes interpretive dance, uh, uh, lyrical dance, like because Dom likes to watch. Uh, so you think you can dance, <laughs> and it's it's good. I root for the tap dancers, <laughs> 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 and actually, I think one 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 year, which is pretty rad. But um, tap dancing, when bad, is the funniest. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's good. It's great. When it's bad, it's great. I got to walk I, in a high school one time. My friend, we had a whole. Clop. Clop. We had a whole. Clop. <laughs> there was a Saturday at our school where it was this big like art event. All the art, all these students in the school doing art. There was a big event, and my one friend was doing tap dancing. So she like asked if I could come watch that. And brother, watching. Watching twenty girls who can't tap dance at the same time can't tap dance together, yeah. brother, is that hilarious? When it's out of sync and everything. Oh, yeah. it's the most jumbled nonsense you've ever heard. But I'll watch these fucking dickheads roll around on the stage and leap in the air and then curl down and then stretch out. It's like it, it, it dancing to me is just stopping a bunch. It's it's like literally that's all it is. <laughs> that's, it's all us. All it is. There's, you're not doing. <laughs> Anything else, brother? I love you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. It's this, 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 this. this. It's you just stop in different positions. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, there but is. It's a- also completely useless and so, random. Like, it's so stupid. So lyric, like lyrical or interpretive or what? I, I, there's a contemplative. I think is what it's called. Yeah, it's like the actual. Because I actually know these fucking terms from the show. 
But it's like, it's this thing where they're... You're a good husband. You really sit through those with her. They're diving around. And like, I'll go, at the end of the performance, I'll go, oh, this guy's going home. And she, and they'll go like, that was brilliant. Your best performance of the year. <laughs> and it's just like, and I'm like, I don't get this. It doesn't make sense to me. And I don't think they do either. No. Because a next, the next one, the routine looks almost exactly the same. And not like they bit off their style or anything, but just as good as the other one. Yeah. And then they're like... You know, you really miss the mock this and year. And then you and watch. It's like, what are you? It's interpreted. <laughs> How can you tell me it's wrong? I just did it for you. Dude, I had that in fuck. I, I took a photography class in high school. Yeah. And it was supposed to be like an app. Like, this is just a picture of a tree. And you're like, yeah, that's. that's yeah, it was like an photography. A, dude, it was like an app. What are you talking about? The, 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 the assignment was like an abstract thing. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, this is bad. I go, you can't say it's bad. It's abstract. You told us to make it random and fucking bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> it's shapes. <laughs> you said. So it's the same thing. I, I, I have two two issues that I really have, art forms that I have art uh, appreciating. Yeah. Is is dance, mostly interpretive or like lyrical is what it's called. That yeah. shit. Or, um, or I would say also, what was the other thing I was thinking about? Tap dancing? No, no, I like tap dancing. Oh, okay. It's that. Oh, and modern art. Modern like anything art. Anything that's because a lot of times I'm like, huh, you just taped shit to paper. I, I don't know. Like this. Well, is it like, goes back to we t- remember the documentary I told you about about that like super indie record label. Yeah. Is a lot of the people. I was so happy they were honest about this because a lot of people in that documentary remember they were saying about the music. They were like, oh yeah, we kind of just did a bunch of shit and saw what happened. That is the shit I hate. Yeah. I go, no, 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 no. That Because to me, that's not how art works. Art is a two- There's no risk in that. Yeah. Art is a two-step process where it goes, you try to say something, either try to tell me something specific or try to use your art to encapsulate an emotion. Right. You know, and then it's, and then the second half of it is, because you don't have art without consumers, we all consume it and we give our take. That's by the way why, like I'm very, I, I, I'm very sympathetic to all these musicians and stuff. But at the same time, like there's a lot of these musicians where it's just like, dude, you guys gotta stop being so sensitive because yeah. you don't, we don't have your thing without the criticism. Right. And it's like, yeah, everyone should be level headed and fucking whatever the fuck. But yeah, I. Uh, but back to the original point, I got a little sidetracked. It's I, I hate. I don't think you can call it fully art if there's no level of intent to it. Right. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying is like, is, is there's nothing here. It just kind of looks like it oftentimes modern art looks to me like children's art. Yeah. Like, like, like like something you would hang on a refrigerator, but I wouldn't because it's so garbage. (laughs) It would be like, this is, well, you could do so you're seven. Yeah. You're seven years old. You can't fucking make shapes yet. What's wrong with you? (laughs) But there's, but there's an issue with like, there's an issue with the interpretive part of it. Like anytime you see this stuff where, like a vignette where like if you're trying to mix other arts into this thing yeah i don't know like it, i i i just like i like music to be music I, that's what we talked about it when we were doing like a bunch of the uh, every time i die things a lot of times when we watch music videos i'm like look if you try to make these big leaps and make this little mini movie mhm i'm gonna go like I, most likely yeah. it's gonna come out like fucking shit yeah. So just do a cool fucking music video, dude. Like, <laughs> like unless you have fucking alien versus predator budget. Yeah. Like, don't fucking try to make an alien versus predator thing for your, your yeah. emo song. You know and, what I mean? And, <laughs> and then when people watch those things and they get like over overly critical, and then these musicians get sensitive about it, it's just like as dude, a com- dude, you made the art, you at, put it out there. But also as a comedian, I have very little sympathy for them because I go it like if I went on stage. And like I did my joke and they didn't laugh and I go, no, 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 this is my art. You're not allowed to not laugh. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, no, that this is, yeah. that's, because like art, I think you said it earlier. Art is subjective. Art, well, yes, one, art subjective, but also art with no level of risk is so boring to me. Yeah. It's like, yeah, there should be a level like, yeah, when you put this out. You might be told by everyone it's fucking dog shit. And that's the thing is once you once you say like once you start you start to to defend it. Yeah. 
you're kind of admitting it's kind of shit too. Yeah. Like you're, you're arguing against it. So like some, part that's a really me, good point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's the thing is if you're like, I've said many times I've done jokes and, and they just fall flat many times. Can you do, can you do one for one more for me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, what did, did I ever tell you my werewolf joke? No. Uh, I, 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 I used to, I did this for the longest time and this guy, hmm, that's weird. Yeah, take He's that. probably fucking in my fighting me for much. No, wait, is that not Mondays? Yeah, today's Tuesday. I'll, I'll call him back. Um, but no, there's a, uh, th- <coughs> there's like a, uh, a term for so like when it's bright out, when the sun's out, it's sunny, right? Like oh wait, I forgot you're doing a joke. Yeah. How, <laughs> how, how come? How come there's not a? How come there's not a term for when it's you know like when there's like a really full moon out there? Like, like how come nobody ever says it's it's moony out? Oh wait, I'm sorry. I'm doing my werewolf material. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was a real attempt. When did you try that? That was. I mean, that was one. Like that was still when I was in Florida doing comedy. Like, oh, like okay. PA. I thought you were gonna be like, oh, that was like a week ago. And like somebody. <laughs> and <they're not laughs> oh, like fucking! I was at Skankfest, and I you're was like, out. I'm doing this tonight. I was performing in front of Dave Attell, and I go, what about those Mooney stuff, huh? And actually, yeah. he probably would take it and make it something. But <laughs> yeah, he but, is a comedic genius. But that, but the thing of like, that was like a thing where I, at a certain point I had to go like, it may be a funny premise, yeah, or a weird thought, yeah, but it's not funny. No, stop saying it, because that's the thing is they would get that reaction usually of, uh, uh, okay, yeah, and you're just like, and like a, a comedian friend of mine would go like. Like, oh, you're going to do your moody joke again? Or like, you know, he was fucking. Yeah. Me. And it was just like one of those things of like, I know it doesn't work. I'm, I'm going to figure out a way. Never did. Yeah. It doesn't work. That's also too why I go, it's okay at, to give up on things. Because yeah. that was bad. Sometimes art really sucks. And honestly, like, imagine if you never stopped doing it. I would never. We wouldn't I, be I, friends. I would not be here. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I would not be in Austin, Texas. No you way. would not be you would not be podcasting and doing comedy with all your friends. <laughs> we wouldn't I'd be shunned by the community. We wouldn't want to hang out with you. Right, because it's not even it's not even it's not even cute, not funny. You know what I mean? Like well, it's not even like it's, that, it's like it's like what the fuck are you talking about? That's my favorite not thing. Funny. That's my favorite thing too. I love when jokes are that bad because you can then go. You're like no no no. It's it also just. Doesn't make sense. Right. Yeah, it's not a good point. It's yeah. not a good point. It's not funny. It's, yeah, it's the thing where like, yes, we don't have a <laughs> term for when it's very moony out, but that's also not funny. We also don't need that. We don't need it. That's not a term we need. It's not a thing. They, they say it's a full moon. You don't say a full sun. Am I right, guys? Yeah. This this is stuff that doesn't work still <laughs> because Andy. It's, it's not bad. good art. It's bad art. Yeah. So like art can be bad. Art is subjective. Somebody out there probably chuckled at that. Somebody well, somebody in the comments somebody in the comments is gonna let us know how much they actually like that. Maybe I should try to I can't wait for the numbers to tank. Oh my god. Like, <laughs> I stopped watching at this point. You're like I got unsubscribe, unsubscribe, I got in on the unsubscribe. Team George press conference. I got out on Mooney. Yeah, what the fuck is well, this? Well, it's like a perfect example too why I think it's like no, I should you, stick to jujitsu. Yeah, it's like why I think it's like, dude, you just gotta well, first off, it kinda it, it, it goes into what we were saying earlier on No More Heroes. It's like as a musician, as an artist, as a filmmaker, you chose a pretend job. Yeah. So you part of that is sometimes reality is going to seep in a little. Yeah. Part of that is it's just like yeah, you're just going to have to. That's part of the experience. You're going to have to deal with it. But at the same time, I understand if it's like, I understand if it's like not constructive, getting irritating and stuff. But at the same time, like, what was the fucking band we were listening to where? Um, they were called like Mom Jeans or something. Uh-huh. There was it was like a Fat Records band. We talked about it a while ago, and I go, I go. They just wrote a Ramones album. Yeah, and like legitimately, I'm not like trying to fucking like big up myself, but I think legitimately, if the band saw that review, it might actually help them. Yeah, because I think that was a very valid critique. And that was the thing. So like, so this uh, reminded me of the. Th- the person that opened I don't think it was Mom Jeans, by the way. I can't remember the name of the band. The person that opened for Lola Lola Young last night. I oh, can't yeah. remember her name. 
but it was a solo artist that had like a track, not like a full band, but just a track of music that she was singing along with. Oh, so the, oh yeah, you were talking about this. So she did a back track. Yeah, it was just it, like not. I don't think it had like backing vocals, but she was singing lead. Ooh, I hate that. Thing. Yeah, I I didn't. No, I didn't hate it. Like I don't look. You're she's uh I think she's a local. I don't know if she's local to Austin or local to Texas, but she is. Is she smaller? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's not, not as well known. No, I no. saw um you know you know the young lady that just got popular uh. Dave Chappelle Ronan or whatever, yeah. <laughs> yeah. whatever her fucking name is. She has that hot to go song. And I like, that's like my new pop song that I kind of love. Uh-huh. So I've been like, I was watching live footage of her and they do. The chorus is like, it's really creepy to say that. What? Anyway, you were l- watching live footage of her. <laughs> I did say it like that. Yeah, I was like, wait, with like a CCTV thing? Or yeah. Like you have yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cameras? I was watching you the ring. I set up a ring camera in her house. I hacked her nest. Yeah, I'm just watching it around the clock waiting for her to Live say free Palestine. Performance footage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I view it as a performance. I'm sort of into... <laughs> The uh, bathroom's kind of a p- performance. You're the art, the art I'm into. This is a performance. <laughs> yeah. uh, but no, I was watching her video. Uh, do, she was doing "Hot to Go" at Lollapalooza, and it just irritates me when like the big artists do this. Where I don't mind a little bit of backtracks. Like, yeah, if you got like a fucking specific synth sound on yeah. one song, yeah, do a backtrack for that. Whatever the fuck. Like, I saw counterparts. They didn't have a basis that night. They did bass backtrack. That's fine. It's a little yeah. weird, but that's fine. Th- this, though, like on the chorus, like the big moment of the song, everyone's singing along to. Like she was like barely singing and the whole thing was backtrack. And yeah. I go, you spent all this money having like, she had like random bodybuilders on stage weightlifting. You had all this money. Like you can't hire three other chicks to sing backing vocals with you. Yeah. But anyway, you're talking. This but this girl's this is a, a smaller act. That's yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna get too bent out of shape about that. But she's she's performing and like so, at at one point like I, I'm kind of further back and I just don't see her when she starts. She starts sitting down in a chair. Mm. Stands up halfway through, starts singing along. She sang of, sitting in a chair. It's crazy. To she me. didn't play not anything. Playing an instrument. Not handling, so she also had a guy on there with playing guitar. Yeah, which was the lowest. It was so horribly mixed. The way you were just, it yeah, was so useless of what he was doing. All he was, he, so he was just, he was just basically there to kind of just cue the songs and just kind of. It seemed like his second time playing with. Them. Yeah, like he was, he like he was learning. The, he was like listening to it for a little bit and be like, find the key and be like. Oh. <laughs> He's like, just figuring it out. It was terrible. It was, but but she was started sitting out and like everybody's kind of and people cheered. A lot more people cheered than I thought she deserved, personally. But not because I thought she was a bad singer. It just she was using so many tricks. She had the backing track, which didn't I don't think had lead vocals in it. Question. But what? What was her music like? It was like it was uh like pop, like electronic. Rock. No pop rock ish country ish like not like country like so much like she had like a country song that she played was it live drums pre-recorded yeah really yeah it was like it was like the studio songs that she was singing with that's what it sounded like to me yeah i don't know i, I you kind of need a band at that point because it was not mixed like her her vocals were turned so far up because she was not projecting yeah that like she was getting drowned out a lot by the music and the fucking noodler over here was just Wafy just see I thought you were gonna say it was like sort of electronic based music I go dude if you're playing a live band yeah like dude you like I'm sorry I get you're a smaller act but like you just need the band there so after the first song she's like uh you know hey guys uh, blah 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 are you guys here to see Lola Young she's like I'm gonna need more energy from you and I'm like I told Dom I go I go you can't fucking Jeb Bush just after you just sat through the second song <laughs> and put the fucking mic in the thing. Like How long was her set? Like 30 minutes. Dude. This... She sat down multiple times and I was like, why do you keep sitting down? You're not playing guitar. You're not. I wonder. I mean, she's not dancing. She's not like. I mean, benefit of the doubt. Maybe she got a fucking thing. But like, dude, sitting and yeah. you're not even like playing an instrument it, it was that's crazy it was crazy to me so like I, so i don't mix know. that with the backtracking and everything that's yeah that's a bummer it was, it was kind of a letdown but it was like the the it was the thing of like 
requesting energy from everybody as you were actively not giving energy performing. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? You're yeah. sitting down singing. Also, what what energy do you want? Right. Yeah. What do you want me to do? Evoke mm. it. And that's the thing. And that's that's my that's my point. Is like this is your art that you're showing us. This is how you chose to to bring it to us. Like obviously, if you're a, a a smaller group or singer performer or something like that, you can't necessarily perform to hire a full band. Yeah. Then why'd you bring that guy? He didn't add anything. This is why hardcore is superior in my book because it's like the whole like I'm gonna need some more energy. It's like, dude, there's so many like little cues you could do. Yeah. Where like you see hardcore bands, they do a cool yeah, you know they, the drill. They do a cool mosh call out, or I mean, you know, we don't even have to bring it to hardcore. There's little things you could do where you're like, yeah, dumbass, start clapping on two and four randomly. Yeah, when people were like, yeah, exactly. Like, there's a couple times where she'd just do this. Yeah. People would start raving. Like, yeah. yeah. There's things you can do to like get us to like call and react like. But like, like it was nice. It, like she's I, she's at the level where, and this is what I'm saying, just for context. She was at the level that when she saw people singing her song, like singing like yeah. the chorus to her song, she's like, "Did you just catch that in the second verse, or did you know you knew this already?" Yeah. And they were like, "Yeah." And she's like, "That means so much." Like she was like, "It was nice." You think she might like, be new to performing? Maybe, maybe, maybe that's it because yeah, it, it was it was just a little bit. It was a little bit off putting, and it was the mix all night was kind of terrible. Like the sound person was not. Very oh really? Good. Like even in the yeah, even with Lola Young, Lola it was Young, kinda, it was lots of like she. Said, at one point, she goes her her mic was too loud, and she'd go like this because she's trying to do like a first of all the acoustic guitar that they had set up, plugged in. He picked it up, strummed it, did nothing. Strummed it, did like this, turned it up, pointed his guitar, turned it up, and then he's like, nothing? And they're like, so then he oh. had to play his electric guitar with no distortion. So wait, what was the venue? Let's talk about the venue. Antones. Antones. In a, uh, Are uh, you still in Austin? Austin? Yeah, yeah. It was off of, it was like like a couple blocks from, uh, on 4th. It was like right, where, fuck, where's that? I think actually kind of where the mothership is or where that uh, what's that poor, poor decisions. Yeah. Where everybody waits for kill Tony. Yeah. A little bit near there. Yeah. It's like like four. Mothership. Like two, sit. Two so down, down that road. Two yeah. block. OK. Yeah. It's like OK. So you, you were in the city. Um, and I, I apologize if you said this earlier. What how many people you think it was? Eh, I mean, like I, it's hard. I, I'm really hard at gauging that sometimes. But like yeah. the venue itself was like. I'm trying to think of a venue that maybe we've been to that you might be able to. Who's as big as Union to. Transfer with Jesus Peace? Uh, no, smaller. It was smaller? closer to, but bigger. Like, imagine if the place that we saw Capra in Philly. Uh, imagine if that whole like spot was like a venue and it was pretty full. Like you know, like uh, the bar area. Yeah, and the everything. bar where no one was like standing like, at. Think of that all open. Okay. Like that whole space, like say the bar wasn't there and everything, that was all like. So there's probably like a couple hundred. In probably, there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, a good amount of people. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah, that um. And she did well. Like I'm not saying she was like that. It just like they had to crank her vocals because she was. I could tell she was not like. It didn't seem like she was like projecting enough. Yeah. So and the mix just was just terrible in general. Like every yeah. time they told him to like turn it down. He would he like cranked it up, and at cer certain points, like the bass was just super loud. Yeah, even so, so much so, I saw the bass player look up and go like, <laughs> "Yeah, that sounds like a happening? that sounds like a venue issue." Sounds like there was a cat on the board. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like just a cat, just like sleeping on the board, <laughs> just fucking with the knobs. That's what it honestly felt like because <laughs> nothing that they were asking for was happening, and things they didn't well, want dude. happening. Or just happening randomly. That's how I felt. Could have been haunted. That's how I felt on uh, on panties or whatever pod we were doing. No, maybe it might have been rough week. They were saying about like Lemare was starting the mosh pits, and someone was just like, "Why weren't you in more of the mosh pits, Andy?" I was like, "Dude, I gotta be honest. Like, goddamn comedy jam was very fun. Yeah. But like, if I was standing in the fucking front, whoever was doing sound on those." It's like you said. It's like a cat fell asleep and pushed all the levers. Yeah, like, and I, I go, on? I go, brother, I'm, uh, like, like it felt like I was a hundred yards back, and I can hear the band clear. I because yeah. I went over to talk to you. You were telling me how you were about to uh, uh, punch every woman in the White Castle. Uh, 
<laughs> and then I go to get a ten dollar slice of pizza, and as I walk back, I'm like so far away from the fucking stage, and I'm like, I can hear this very I hear, clearly. I, can hear I go everything perfectly. I go, I'm sorry, this isn't me being a fucking cranky old old guy. I'm like, it's so fucking loud. I'm just always like, who does the sound for these things? And that's what I mean. It's like I think. When it's a music venue, so I think Anton, like they had a stage, they had a sound guy. Like it's not like they're, it's not like they're not used to putting on shows. Yeah, but and I don't think their needs were too much. Like like sometimes, like when he'd say like guitar, I saw the guitar player multiple times point to his guitar and go up. Yeah, up this. Oh, like damn that's such an element of live performing i don't th- i don't think about because i'm just the audience member but yeah dude it's gotta really like can you imagine doing stand-up and just like the mic was low and they just never turned it up yeah and you're just like hey can i get can i get more in the mic yeah more in the mic hey you know like it, like it would be a weird thing where like i think at a certain point because i had that at um i was performing at it was like a firehouse or something like mm-hmm. that somewhere in like uh, rural PA. Rural, rural PA. <laughs> and I was like, and I was the, I think I went first. Yeah. And I had like the guy who was uh, in, like hired us was like, hey, so anyway, you know, we hired some comics and blah, blah, blah. And here they are. Here's Patrick or whatever. And it came up. And the thing they had was like hooked up to the PA in the firehouse. But like it cut out like every. Like randomly, and I swear to God, at the punchline of every one of my jokes. <laughs> and I, so like, funny. At a certain point, where I was just like, I, and I was one of them. I was doing a religious joke, and I was like, oh, the, you know, God. Uh, yeah. And like, good but save. It was. It was in general. It ended up working out. But then the comic after me just put them. Just said like, just didn't do it because it was a. It's like a fire hall. It's like a VFW. Like there's just right here. You can just project. He just didn't use a microphone. He just put the mic down. I was like, "Damn, what a fucking dickhead!" <laughs> he made me look like an asshole. Wait, I, did he leave it or his stand, or he just not use it? He just didn't use it. it there was no stand. It was a fucking wireless mic. I that can't made. explain it, but that bugs the fucking shit right, out of it me. Me out. Like, I go, I, "Fuck I, you, dude." I was like, "Hey, man, like, no, use the microphone. You got to do it too." But he did have a, a longer set than I did. Yeah, it was still like one of those things of like, I don't know, man. Deal with it. He's also this is also a guy that's not very great at crowd work. Uh, so okay. I think there's something about the on your feet kind of thing of like he doesn't want anything unexpected. So he's just like, yeah, I'd rather, yeah. Try, I'd rather lose my voice. <laughs> Wait, was the so was the sound like pumping through speakers in the ceiling of the VFW? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So like you know, like you know how the the drop ceilings. Yeah, yeah. Most of those places. And like the fucking fluorescent rows of lying. Shit. Yeah. It was like every other one, like almost like you would see at like a Kmart or a fucking Target, like just like a little speaker. <laughs> oh, God. A, a speaker in the thing. So like that's like so there's no there's no PA. Yeah. It's but it is technically oh, a PA. It's comedy. Comedy is it's still a good show. Possible. I mean, <laughs> still had a good time. You were on it, baby. Yeah. Um, you didn't do the. Got movie. a good clip from that too, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, I interacted with a lady that was eighty percent of it was good. That the other part that cut out wasn't that, good. That minute and thirty five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that uh, it's it's if we can go on a comedy tangent, it's so funny how many people are like so gung ho about doing comedy in certain venues, and yeah. they don't they don't for a second. Think about what would make the show good. Yeah. They're just like, oh, you can do comedy under any type of parameter. Yeah. And you're like, no, why don't you get like a, why don't you get a PA system? Yeah. Why don't you have like you guys, it, you could rent a PA system so simply. They're so cheap. And like it's it or even in this case, the particular comic Brother. that asked me to do the show, I know has a PA system. Brother, like, when I first started doing uh, a little extra, you could bring it himself. When I fucking first started doing uh, Porsche Tour with Robbie, like now he's got like a like an elite setup and everything. But like on the first, dude, I think there was one where literally, no, I think we were borrowing the dude's thing actually on this one. Yeah, it was a nice speaker and a microphone connected to it. Yeah. And there weren't like a shit ton of people, so it worked. And I'm like, yeah, that's all you got to fucking do. But you have to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to make like, well, what do you, you know, uh, you guys want anything to eat? You guys want it? Like, no, no, no. Like, make sure at least we can have the performance part of it. Eating and all that You didn't stuff want anything to eat? Hap- It'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening either way. I don't know. But I yeah. do think that they need to normalize, like, 
If you're in a venue with food, give the comic some food. Yeah, bro. If it's not free, if you there was a play, there was a comedy club back in uh, uh, PA that was a also a hotel and also a restaurant. You know what it is? The in Lancaster? No, in Harrisburg. The the main zone there. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, for laughter, the Auto laughter zone. zone, the laughter zone, Auto Zone, <laughs> but they funny Auto Zone. <laughs> they are also a rest. They are connected to and owned by the same people. Yeah, as a fucking restaurant. Yeah, and a, a motel, yeah. motel, not hotel. Sorry. So the fact that they they never they didn't give openers rooms, which makes sense, I guess. They tried to keep it local for the openers. Yeah, but then they started doing a thing where. Even headliners would get a twenty dollar gift card for the weekend. What for the for the restaurant? How many shows are they doing? Two shows, Friday Saturday, or sometimes four shows depending on how the ticket sales went. Could be Friday two he, shows. Twenty dollars. That's psychotic. It might be more. It might be more for the weekend. It might have been fifty dollars. Well, when did you but even still? When did you experience it? I so I remember when they stopped giving the openers uh, meals, and I told them I'm never gonna do that place again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like good, that's the thing. Good on like, you, bro. You can't you can't do that. But like when you were and, doing, and then they started doing it to headliners. That's what I'm saying. The headliners get a Brother. Rich Ross. The last time he was there, he got a fifty dollar gift card. That's crazy. Isn't that fucking crazy? It's like just give them food. Yeah. Also, the pr- like, it's literally free for you. I will <laughs> say, like fifty dollars will cover it, but it's also like the. Maybe. Pr- what? Maybe. It's a steakhouse. So what if your headliner, the people you asked to be there that weekend to entertain your people, your fans, your, yeah. your locals, your audience or whatever. Oh, I didn't even include. Well, Rick Va- Rich Voss isn't getting drunk because he's right. sober. But yeah, I didn't even think about drinks yeah, and everything. Drinks, anything, yeah. But dude, yeah. No, like I, a perfect example. I did uh, I did uh, the Dojo of Comedy forever ago. Shout out Dojo Comedy. Fucking, I didn't realize this, but Sam Tripoli runs it, which is cool. Oh, I've been cool. beginning a tinfoil hat kind of hardcore. Yeah. So shout out Sam Tripoli. I bonded with him with, ju- with jujitsu. Oh yeah, I saw that. I was yeah. getting, I caught myself getting jealous. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I want to talk to Sam Tripoli. <laughs> and when I told him I was a purple belt, he's like, Wow, really? Yeah. And I was like. Yeah. He seems like a really cool dude. Yeah. Um, I could teach him. Well, time. no, I was laughing. I was like, that's what Pat had. But you can talk to fucking anyone. That's how you got uh, fucking join Angel, Angel to <laughs> run away. <laughs> no, but uh, we're at the we're at the Dojo of Comedy. And it was like, it was a big showcase. None of us are bringing out anyone. You know what I mean? Right. It, was a, it, it was like six comics showcase show. I think it was KP Burke show. Shout out KP Burke. KP Burke. Um, he's the fucking man. I just said KB Burp. <laughs> but like, dude, we were sitting there. They had like, they had a cooler with a couple beers. And then just without anyone asking, they brought out two big appetizer platters. You're like, yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be a whole, what's your order? What's your order? But it's like, yeah, just throw out the fucking shit. I don't know. This might be like unsuccessful comedian bitching, but it's just like, like sometimes I think the thing with comedy that drives me fucking crazy is there's these different areas where you go hey can i can i please get the bare minimum yeah. and they're like why are you such an entitled piece of shit well that's the thing is like so comedy is the i've heard i've heard this said multiple ways but it's it's pretty universal like the pay scale for comedy or comics in general hasn't changed like ever like the kind of standard for most clubs like the place that i was just talking about Ever since ever I've ever been there for the whole time I lived in PA was always fifty dollars for the weekend yeah. for uh, the the hosts the people arguably that do the most work over the weekend they got they got to do the announcements you want you got to do the timing you got to do this they don't they weren't lighting the people but you still have to you know no, yeah you do all if the you're fucking being, shit if you're being a good host you got to do the most work but the fifty dollars thing and then it's the fact that when this personal club. Like which is again pretty standard. Yeah, it's uh, some clubs would give you seventy five, some would well, give you seventy five a show. Some, it's depending on how I will, successful the club is. So. I will say, I will say, like there are a lot of good clubs. Like uh, fucking, I went to Raleigh with Nate, and they they looked out. You right. know what I mean? And that's what I'm saying. So, so like, I think I think what you're saying is but, more reminiscent of like yeah, shitty clubs. Yeah, but also like they're like for the most part, it's like 
they kind of have what they're comfortable paying the performers and yeah. stuff like that. It's when the places start taking stuff away. So when oh, I got like, what you're saying. When you're like, okay, yes, now you're going to get $50 to work the whole weekend, but you're going to get no free meals, no food. Okay? Yeah. And that was the thing. It was $50 for the weekend and one free meal a night. And it was like, that's, yeah, like you said, that's showing me the courtesy of like, you're at least willing to give me a fucking cheeseburger and some goddamn onion rings and a Coke. Yeah. And I'll make all the announcements for you. I'll try to warm the crowd up for you. I'm going to remember this guy's credits. I'm going to say the thing. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I'm going to do the fucking job. It's not just going up there to just tell them yuck em ups. you got to remember sh- if you're doing a good job. Yeah. And that's the thing. <clears throat> when you're when these places – and I don't know – and that's what I'm saying. is I don't know how much care in general – this is bringing it back to the sound guy argument. Yeah. This is – reminiscent of like if these places this is can't be the only club that's cutting back and this can't be the only thing that's being cut back at clubs so what else is like how much less care and i'm not saying onion rings for the comics is uh supporting the arts but it fucking is like if if you're if you're cutting back shit like that what are they cutting back from music venues as far as sound guys what are they cutting back as far as like lighting experts, uh, uh, music technicians? It used to be a thing. I went to school because I wanted to be the sound guy at my favorite music venue when I was a kid. That's the bar I set for myself. Really? Yeah, I wanted to work. So you went to school for? I wanted to. I wanted to be in music production, and I said, worst case scenario, I can work. Like I would get an opportunity to work at State Theater and be like. Because I really appreciated the sound guys there because they were fucking good. Yeah. They were really good to, to the effect of, like, I'd go over and be like, you're fucking... I, like, I would go over to them and go, like, you're killing it. And they're well, just like, thanks, buddy. Like, I, uh, you, this, the sound guy conversation... That's re- the guy I made friends with at the venue. <laughs> this sound guy conversation reminds me of a thing I, th- I, uh, I thought of a while ago when I was younger working in kitchens. And I call it the dishwasher paradox okay. where I go, you, the problem with, and this is more so like if you're in a high scale restaurant, the dishwasher is going to be the fucking man. Cause he's going to get paid really well. Yeah. Um, but I'm more saying like in your like average, like an Applebee's or something, you're never going to find a dishwasher. Who's good. The best you could hope for is a dishwasher. Who's pretty good because in a place like that, the reason that dude, and I'm not trying to, if you're a dishwasher, I'm not trying to shit on you. Um, but the reason, the reason you stay being that dishwasher is you, cause you can't like get better at anything else. You can't and be trusted with it. And else. when you get better, you're going to go, why am I just washing dishes? Let me go fucking do this. Or you're hard working and you just can't, you haven't learned the language yet. Whatever. There's a lot. I'm not trying to shit on dishwashers. It's just one of your jobs. I love all dishwashers. I love you. If you're a dishwasher, you come to the show, I'll suck you off. (laughs) But what I think happens in smaller venues like that, I wonder if they never quite get a great sound guy. Right. Because a great sound guy would cost money. is going to be at the better venue. Yeah. And also, he's going to cost money. Like, you can. If, if I'm having a music venue, period, the, one of the first things I'm thinking of is, like, obviously, you got to have a liquor license, all that shit. But, like, like I'm thinking, like, what security am I going to have? Yeah. And what sound guy am I going to have? Because those are two things that could really fucking. Fuck the mood, dude. But you know what fucks that? Fuck the mood, dude. Yeah, yeah. fuck your mood. Get <laughs> over here. Fuck the mood. We can dude. shut these cameras right off. Well, we'll fuck the mood. But dude. you know, <laughs> you know what? Um, you know what throws a fucking wrench into that? Huh. And I've noticed it with like a lot of comedy venues and comedy clubs and shit. What's that? Because there's a lot of people who teach who treat comedy clubs like a bar that has comedy. So I uh. guarantee you, there's a lot of music venues who treat. Because ideally, there you was a bar. In ideally, the same room as the music. Ideally, you want it to be uh, a music venue that serves alcohol. But a lot of people treat their are their music venues as a bar with a band. Maybe that's the tiers of music. Like there's like a music venue that's obviously dedicated to music. Like if you're in PA, the uh, Franklin Music Hall. Franklin Music Hall. Even well, even still, there's like a bar connected to it. But I feel like in most places, Underground Arts is a good example. Yeah. Of like yeah, is like where the bar's in that room. This is music. 
Yeah, there's a there. there's a bar in the showroom, but there's like a little. It's but there's like a bar like this room. The bar was in the room. Actually, underground arts rules because they literally have they literally have a yeah. It's a whole separate room. They have cameras for the show. Yeah, there's literally a like. Hey, is it getting a little too loud? Yeah, go, go <laughs> fucking chill out. Have a fucking a margarita and just watch the show. But if that was such a good venue. But that's what I'm saying is like there's those types of things. So like obviously if the bar the one existing bar is in the same room as the music that is you're there to watch most likely the sound guy is not going to be great yeah so like i i just need to go in with those kinds of expectations that's a good parameter you know what i mean where's the bar in reference to the stage yeah because if the bars in the the bar if there can be a bar in the room but But it can't be the only bar if the because we know that there's going to be the bar and there's going to be another place to distribute did we just did we just crack the code on quality of music venue there's a bar to stage ratio bar to stage ratio the bar to stage ratio yeah (laughs) yeah you're welcome you're welcome because that's the the hard work we do here for you uh what was the word again Dragus? No. Oh yeah, Dragus. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other. I was like, we're so funny. <laughs> we took we took our podcast name and included it in a fun little slur, and we made it uncomfortable because you know why? It's marketing wise, this is my Matthew McConaughey from Wolf of Wall Street vibe. It's because what happens when you say Dragus? People go, "What you say?" Then you say it again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, then you, people are going to go, look, what does that mean? And then now you're talking about it. And then you yell it. And then you're selling them. <laughs> <laughs> and then you jerk off in the bathroom. And then you buy. I don't know. And I don't then know you're screaming dragons at your kid's soccer game. I'm the guy that figures out how far it takes to get Bud Lights uh, <laughs> from the stage. And <laughs> that's, that's the work I'm doing. But I feel like it's God's work. <laughs> Mohawk is, I feel like the if an outdoor venue ends up being uh, a different a different thing but if you remember correctly there's a little bar in the back and there was a big bar separated completely in a different room with chairs. none of their none of their oh yeah they had a small bar small bar in line with the stage big bar, uh medium bar up top big bar inside completely separated yeah and that's and that was a sick ass venue yeah i think we cracked a little bit of a code on that the stage to bar ratio you got to have more bars than stage or when we saw Capra, okay, bar, stage, separate rooms. Was the separate rooms, but they had a problem with the lighting. What? Remember the they had they told them to turn off the fucking blinking lights because they were giving them a fucking. <laughs> oh really? I don't yeah. remember that. So it was just like one of those things of like, okay, well this guy maybe this guy's a little overachieving. <laughs> He's like, this is a cool venue. I'm gonna make it even cooler with my lighting. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. That's so funny. We were just Dom and I were just talking about that. Where we were like saying we saw that like twice. In a row, like PJ Love Drafts was, I think, another one. Or no, it wasn't that one. It was uh, the place I saw Mutoid Man the day before. Was like they're so good at it. I feel like they had their own uh, Mutoid Man. Yeah, I feel like they had their own sound guy, or they just are able to fix a lot the more. Um, a lot bigger bands will just bring their own sound yeah, guy. Yeah. So, so like, there's certain things where like I'm I'm noticing sometimes they get a little bit too. Either way, your your sound and or lighting guy is going to be quite suspect in a in a venue that has the bar in the same room as the stage. Damn. You're welcome. Bar to stage ratio. That's why we do this hard work. That's why you watch it. And thank you for watching. For those gems. It took us the whole show to get to that, but that's a fucking... That's a goddamn thing that people are going to be sitting there going like, God, this kind of sucks. And they're going to do this. They're going to go, wait a minute. Oh, no. <laughs> Why'd we see him here? <laughs> Should have Google mapped it. I mean, we are spreading. Uh, we are spreading very useful information. But this is a- like they everyone has the fucking you. You gave them the five below and Old Navy info. Yeah. Where you've now presented the bar to stage ratio. I, th- I think there's also there's also a weird thing too with uh uh fuck what was I just gonna say oh this is a this is a oh tip. I you were you were gonna say Duh! no <laughs> I was not gonna say that that's Sorry. my outro I love doing that joke <laughs> I think it was something like uh, <laughs> no I I was 
this is a, a tip for anybody, any people watching that may have a small venue or want to open a venue. If you have a bar in the same room as a stage, really consider a good sound guy because that's yeah. going to be harder for them. They're going to be competing with people ordering drinks. They're going to be competing with drunk people. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be competing. It just looks like they got five more. That's all. They got, <laughs> they got another inning and an out. Um, do it. Sorry, we're watching. Or legitimately, if you have a small venue, try to find someone who's – excited to be a sound guy dude because they mean, might yeah. suck at first but they're gonna get really amped to learn how to do it right. and they're going to get that it's only gonna help a rising tide raises all ships yeah so if, if one if if sound guys in general that are looking to get into those big venues mm -hmm. if you know how to control the sound in a smaller venue as well as the big venue that's the talent mm -hmm. is being able to be fluid with your gender and your profession. And your profession. Yeah. That's one to grow on. Today, I'm a lady fireman. Tomorrow, I'm a man CEO. Tomorrow, I identify as a man. The head of a the CEO firm and also a rapist. I'm a man. <laughs> I'm a man who runs Kellogg. Uh, going back to the uh, Frosted Flakes. No, what did you say? <laughs> What? The cereal. The, cereal. the guy. You, that was the last show. Forgot guy. about the guy you wanted None to kill. Of these guys know what that is. They better. If you guys don't listen to both, I'm freaking out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. This has been Drag the Lake. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, yeah. We'll see you. Power to the people, guys. Power to the peeps. A terrifying commercial.